I'm Bruce Pollock. How are you? Good. How are you? Um, I started an organization in Rochester called Friends of Educational Excellence four years ago. Summary for you. Um, we help, we support community school partnerships in the schools that bring volunteers into the schools to work with kids in the city. Mm -hmm. So on the other side, you'll see the schools that we support. Um, that's a list of nine schools. Mm -hmm. And actually, as of yesterday, uh, we added three more that were finally approved, all in the 19th Ward. Okay. So they're all around here. Mm -hmm. um, our objective is to provide enough volunteers so that we're supporting all the kids in the school that are not at grade level so that they can achieve grade level skills or at least optimize their performance in school as much as possible mm -hmm. and, and then move the needle of success for the whole school. Um, we're looking to change the reputation of the Rochester City School District and help transform the city school district so that it's what everybody would like it to be. Great. So having said that, it's a journey. Yes, so we're on, we're on, the, on the journey. Um, right now in those nine schools, there are 270, well, as of last month, there were 275 volunteers. Wow. And uh, um, we just added the, another three here. Uh, 29, 44, and 16. Excellent. That's wonderful. Um, but every school needs a partner. That's the model right now. So I don't know if there's a community partner here or not. Yes. There's a partner. Actually, we have several partners. Several right. partners. We have uh, the Gandhi Institute. Methodist Church, we have uh, the U of R, we have Nazareth. Um, that's actually one of my strengths. I, um, I'm from this community and uh, I've done a lot of work with community organizations in the past. I used to work with Lifetime Assistance as a case manager. I used to advocate for us, um, children and adults with disabilities. So I would have to reach out and get several resources from all over the city. So we used to do have several um, partners and some have a different focus than others. Some support throughout the year like uh, Mr. Tillman and others may support as a resource like getting codes or hats or ribbons mm -hmm. or tutoring so mm -hmm. depending on um, what the need is. Or by a, a purpose of Yes, we you have a large music program. Uh, we do. We have an awesome here. strings program mm -hmm. um, here. Through Center for Youth, they're volunteers from the Pinfield Orchestra. Yeah. Excellent. And we're going into our sixth year this year with that program. And we have about 150 students, and then we take 50 on the road to perform. Wow. Third to eighth grade. Yes. Uh -huh. Phenomenal. The kids are wonderful. I try not to cry at any performance, always do. It's just, you know, it's beautiful. They play the violin, but then they also sing. So. You have the best of both worlds with them and can't help but enjoy the performance. They uh, receive the standing ovation on Monday at the Infield uh, Orchestra holiday performance. So, yeah, they're very good. They do an awesome job. They work hard. How, how long have you been at this school, Ava? Okay, well, um, I've been here at the school, been a part of the district for about 10 years. My journey is quite interesting because I started here as a little girl, as a student. And uh, then I taught here for eight years and then was promoted to be an assistant principal when I went to school eight. And I served there for a year and with budget cuts, I was cut, last one in, first one out. Mm -hmm. So I was cut from the budget at school eight and um, began to receive calls from the community uh, for interviews for administrative positions and got a call from Superintendent Vargas mm. and he personally interviewed me and he thought that I'd be a great fit for school 19 and so I've been here this is my third year here as the principal so uh, very um, attached to this school this is definitely home for me 
I live down the hill on Flint Street. So been in that home for 46 years. Grew up there, all of my siblings attended here. So I, I know many of the parents and many of the children. This is <coughs> definitely a generational school. When you talk to our kids, they'll tell you, my grandma went here, my mother, my father, my uncle. It, it's just, mm -hmm. it, you know, it's very family oriented. And if you come while school is in session, you, you'll feel that the minute you walk through the door. Very loving environment. Everybody's always happy, joking, and our middle school kids are crazy. <laughs> That's normal <laughs> hormonal stuff, but you know, um, uh, the kids here really love being here and um, wouldn't have it any, any other way. Are the community yeah. school, I mean, most of the students come from out the area? Or no, we used to be a neighbor neighborhood school. Um, then the charter school era came about, and so the district wanted to make more choice for the kids, so that's how we lost the neighborhood status. So um, about 62% uh, of my kids are busers, and then the rest come from the area. Uh, so then have long walks. We would love to be in neighborhood schools again. Many of our parents would love the school being That would be your, your preference would be a neighborhood Yes, school. yes. I think that's why uh, parent engagement has gone down so low. Mm -hmm. I believe if we yeah. were a neighborhood school, it would be so much better. Yeah. You know, and then you have the issue of, you know, some of our family being broken up, they, their child can't fit here, we have no yeah. room, so they got to go to mm -hmm. four school, or go across town at nine, or mm -hmm. go to 45, and then they have to choose which open house do I go to because mm -hmm. my kid's over here, and then I have mm -hmm. a kid here and here, so. That's been a dilemma for some of our people. Have you heard anything from the district? So I hear from Vargas. He, he wants to wants go back it. in that direction. He wants it. He's doing the research right now. He definitely wants it. Um, he's hearing it more and more from parents and uh, from um, you know district staff. We we all would like that. You know, it's it's very taxing on teachers as well as parents. You know, it'd be nice to be able to walk down the street to look, which we do sometimes, and talk to parents if they're. Children have been missing for X amount of days, but it'd be nice to have all the kids within this, the perimeter of this school so that we could, you know, walk yeah. and visit, you know, so parents would try to catch them, you know, at home. Let's, let's finish going around. Um, we Dr. skipped our Braswell. vice principal there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I'm Dr. Margaret Braswell. Uh, this is my fourth year assistant principal here at School 19. I was at uh, East High School uh, almost 10 years there, and Charlotte High School for a year, and mm. then I came here to elementary. So what do you think of being in elementary school? Mm -hmm. um, it's After being in high school, yeah. That'd it's different. Um, I came from industry. I, I was a chemist before I came to mm. Seeing the children in high school, I thought that, oh my goodness, these kids have grown up problems, adult problems, you know, and I felt this is, this is just too much. Then coming to elementary, these little, little people have adult problems. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, yep. sometimes it's overwhelming when you think about what they have to deal with. Mm -hmm. um, I love the small children. They, they love, you know, very loving. In spite of everything, they just love you. Very um, loving. You don't always see that in high school. Um, but the children are very, um, you know, every day they come back, it's a new day for them. You know, they forget off about everything. But um, they, they really, really need people that really care. And, um, and I, I think that that's the, one of the biggest differences. And the challenges are how do you take care of a small child? Um, Whereas uh, children in high school, they're almost out of their homes. They're going on to college. Some of them going on to careers and work or whatever. So they're moving out of the situation. It's possible that they might get in a better situation if they get out of their parents' home or from that neighborhood or environment. But uh, when you look at children, they have so long to go. And when you find out what the problems are, it's like, how can I help them? You know. And so you here at this school. We <laughs> we do everything. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, whatever they whatever they go need. Go get medicine, to take them to the doctor, it. you name it. Wow. We do it wow. to get the job yeah. done. 
so that they can be productive academically. We, we don't want any barriers, so we go above and beyond. We really do here. And that's where that family piece comes in. I can give you an example. We had um, a family of five who lost their mother and um, the older I think sister or brother got custody of them. Helped the family get money to bury the mother. All of us cooked dinner every day for the family until mm -hmm. they got settled and comfortable in a new setting. So those are the types of things that my staff will do that this community could do because wow. we care, we're very passionate, but we, we genuinely love our children and do whatever. I'm Bill Metcalfer. I mm -hmm. I volunteered here for a year. Mm -hmm. I think it was 2000. 2000, I, I forget. And um, then, and uh, that was with um, Rob Faulkner. Mm -hmm. And this was in the music program. And I, I coached the kids. You know, mm -hmm. Rob had me um, doing one on one. Mm -hmm. And also, I would help um, him mm -hmm. um, in the group setting. And um, I would um, um, help with the moving of the violins and mm -hmm. such. And mm -hmm. um, when I first heard that group, mm -hmm. my jaw just dropped. Know, right? And this was at an RPO concert, mm -hmm. and it was um, announced that they were going to play in the back of the auditorium. Mm -hmm. And Patty was there, and Gretchen was there. Mm -hmm. These are the volunteers. Um, mm -hmm. Patty is in charge. Mm -hmm. Patty or Mellon, um, Grace and um, not Grace, Gretchen, mm -hmm. and I mean these kids. They were in the third grade. Mm -hmm. and they were fantastic. Yes. They were fantastic, and Rob, of course, was mm -hmm. there. And, uh, mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I got a lot of um, good feeling from being here. Mm. Now, at that time, I believe it was kindergarten through six. It was. And now it's through eight. I was a sixth grade eight. teacher then. <laughs> Pardon me? I was a sixth grade teacher then. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, now we're pre-K to eighth grade. We're one of the grow out schools. We're actually one of the first grow mm -hmm. out schools. Now, I, I've got a question. What did the charter schools have to do with its becoming an unneighborhood school. Too. Well, they, it gave, they tried to give parents more choice like the charter schools did. Mm -hmm. So, you know, give them opportunity to choose other than their neighborhood schools. So if like a kid wanted to go to Sola or Wilson or, you know, give oh, them I other see. options mm -hmm. other than their neighborhood schools. So that's why neighborhood schools kind of fizzled out. So the district got into giving choice, like, you know. Okay. Um, I think everybody knows me by now that have been watching these videos. <laughs> but <coughs> my name is John Boutte, and uh, I'm co-chair of the Southwest Common Council. We got going on this back uh, a year and a half ago when the district closed school 16 mm -hmm. and um, moved it over to Freddie Thomas. Um, we've been fighting for getting neighborhood schools back and keeping them in the 19th Ward, and now we're spreading around on the east side of uh, Genesee to try to make sure that all these schools are, uh, you know, in good shape and that if, if the district ends up sh shifting the crosshairs to another school that we're ready. So, um, we, and one of the big things that we've been pushing for is um, trying to make sure that we get back to a neighborhood school because it, it just seems like so much better for parents to mm -hmm. stay involved with their kids' schooling. Marion? I'm Marion Boutte. I live with him. Um, <laughs> we've been in the 19th Ward. Well, I've been here since 1974. Uh, so I've seen a lot of change over time and not all of it for the better. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and like John said, uh, the thing that really got us 
set off this time was that precipitous closing of School 16. Mm -hmm. It's just suddenly in August we found out School 16 is uninhabitable. Mm -hmm. so kids are going over across mm -hmm. town, so that just didn't seem right mm -hmm. uh, for many reasons. Yeah. So here we are. We keep chipping away at this stuff. Well, thank you. We appreciate it. Okay, well, we may have a few more folks coming, but uh, we... Let me ask another Patricia question. Oh, yeah. Is it Charlie Brown? Charlie Brown? Yeah. No, no. He's in Peanuts. No, yeah, not, not that, that one. one. <laughs> <laughs> this one's in Science and Technology. He's the next, Peanuts. <laughs> he's the next Kodak executive. At, in RIT and in CAST? I don't know what program he's in. He's just no, I think I'm... He's, he's very much involved also. I'm oh, is he? Concerned, yeah. He's, he's kind of retired early, kind of. Oh, did he? Okay, he's retired. Unwillingly. <laughs> oh. Um, no, I can't say no. that. I, okay. I do. <laughs> okay, if uh, we might as well, I see you've got the uh, slide projector set up, so you're probably going to do a little presentation. Uh, be sure to speak up so that we capture everything on. She's going to do it my movie debut. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, we, what we'll do is, um, <laughs> along with the minutes, we try to post some of these presentations so that oh, okay. people who can't make it can still participate. You know? That's smart. Because um, there smart. invariably are some conflicts that keep people from coming. So. All right, well, as you know, we are Dr. Charles T. Lunsford, school number 19. Uh, we have about 90 staff members, two administrators, 42 classroom teachers, nine special subject teachers, and what, we, what we mean by special subject teachers are uh, our PE teachers, art, music, band, those type of teachers. Our support teachers, um, would be our paraprofessionals. Last year we decided to revise our positive behavior uh, school-wide program to uh, SOAR. There were about 12 staff that got together with one administrator and came up with this acronym. So when our kids are in the hallways and when they're not doing what they need to do, we tell them to remember to SOAR because our symbol for school 19 or mascot as you will is an eagle so our vision and mission statement you'll see in the building when you walk around is posted by each elevator is posted in every classroom our vision of excellence is to soar to success by caring about ourselves and others caring about our environment and caring about learning because together we are one and we've had that for some time Together we are one. Ever since I've been in this building, we've had that. So we kind of revised our vision and our mission statement last year because it was a little too wordy, and we wanted to be able to have the students articulated as well as our parents. Um, our mission st mission statement is: it is our mission to prepare our students to soar to new heights by creating a nurturing learning environment where students become productive citizens and global leaders. That is our hope for our student population because they use Facebook and texting and Twitter and all these other things, you know. Is it true? Is it helpful? Is it inspiring? Is it necessary? Is it kind? Um, this year, our report card system has changed for mainly our, um, our middle school. They used to have six market peers. Now they have four. The other change is that we've gone to a new system, a nine-point system based on uh, our students not meeting standards, working towards standards, meeting standards, and exceeding standards. Um, we've shared this with our students and our staff. These are some things that um, we face that take away from the instructional time in our building that we're trying to focus on this year, um, being tardy to school, tardy to class, not having a pass, but just leaving the classroom and trying to encourage our students to make sure they ask for permission. Passing time in between classes, having an actual real pass. We've had a couple students try to write their own passes. <laughs> so it's a good joke. 
Uh, ten minute rule, you know, stay in another teacher's room too long without permission, avoiding that test that could be coming up. Uh, the three L's, lunch, laboratory, and lockers, we try to take care of that before class begins. Understanding dismissal procedures and our dress code. We are a uniform school. We do understand at times that students grow out of their clothing and sometimes the washing dryer is not always available. So we have, uh oh, I'm about to lose power. So we have a, um, we have a, um, our parent liaison room, which is 309, where we house, you know, uniform clothing and things to support our students. Alrighty. We also have an alternative program that we're connected to called Links. So if we have a child that uh, needs support, or needs to attend another program to get support before they return back to us, we make a referral to Lynx Academy, which is on um, Ridgeway Avenue, it's in the old Marshall Building, and is shared with All City. Um, you guys are probably also familiar with the new suspension policy, so this is information I'm sharing with you is what we share with our parents at our town hall meetings. Um, in school suspension can be up to one to five days, actually. Um, out of school suspension, then you have PM school and long term suspensions. Where a school owned, the administrator of the building gets to make those decisions. The PM school and long term um, has to be approved by uh, central office. Uh, non negotiables uh, we have in the district that will not be tolerated. We do scan our students because we believe in safety first. So our babies come in exit seven, our middle school kids come in exit eight, and they are all scanned every day. And we do collect cell phones and we lock them up. Um, some of the opportunities we have here, uh, Lego League, STEM Swan, Student Government, Young Ladies of Distinction, we have middle school intramural sports, our basketball season has started, KBA basketballs for grades four through six, we are connected to the Rochester Broadway Theater League. Flint Street Rec Center, Annie is wonderful. We love Annie Pride. We um, do a lot of mm -hmm. activities and extracurricular things together. She's phenomenal. Uh, we have a Rice of Passage program that is for boys and girls. It's, it's through RASA, through the city of Rochester. We started that. We've had our Good News Club with um, Edgewood Free Methodist, but this year we were short staffed, so we weren't able to do that. We have a Young Men at Peace, which is through the Gandhi Institute. And we have the Cub Scouts that are here every Wednesday. Uh, we are also partnered with Food Link, so they feed our babies dinner for all the after school mm -hmm. activities. So today was spaghetti and meatballs. Mm -hmm. And they loved it. <coughs> Sally. So th this um, is what, what group that does the dinners or? Food Link. Food Link? Food Link. Okay. That's a hot meal. We do the hot meals when they come. And uh, we serve it to our students. Currently, these are the needs that we have here at School 19. Um, we really want to increase our parent engagement. We do a good job of that when we have a special event because we've gotten wise, and so I partner my PTO meeting with an event where the children are presenting. And we all know as parents, we do not want to miss our children presenting. So what I do is I do a PTO meeting, then we do a concert or a presentation with the kids. So we get a very good turnout. I think this year we had, I want to say, at least 100, 110 people here for open mm. house. Oh, it's dying. Oh, it's, it's dead. It's no. Dead. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try to remember our needs. Okay. This is Dr. Braswell's um, laptop is dying because uh, her office is actually downstairs. Yeah. And she's up here a lot helping out. Mm. Um, Trying to think some of our needs. Um, as you know, I gave you a um, a sheet. Our violinists want to go to Washington D.C. See and meet President Obama and play for him. Ooh. So we are collaborating something with Elaine Spa from Center for Youth and Louise Slaughter. So they're working on something right now for us, and we are trying to fundraise. This is. Um, an estimated cost of everything per student. We're taking, looking at taking about uh, 40 to 50 students 
with some parent chaperones and staff to support this endeavor. And we are looking for fundraising ideas and ways to raise some money. Um, I'm looking at probably sending out some letters to um, a lot of our community partners to see if they'd be willing to make a donation or even sponsor a child. Um, this is something we really want to do. Uh, we definitely believe that our students should be exposed to things outside of the city of Rochester. And um, that's one of our needs. Another need that we have is that we received the grant from the Greater Rochester Health Foundation for recess. And um, you guys know that lunch has been extended for our students. And um, so they have 20 minutes to eat and 20 minutes of recess. So um, we want more volunteers to support the manpower that we need with taking the kids outside and uh, bringing them back in. Because of the setup of the building is kind of difficult because by the time you get out the door or down the hill, around the building, you lost five minutes. So our goal is to, you know, we really need some volunteers to help out with that. We thought about um, reaching out to some colleges, some college students who are majoring in PE, maybe having them come and support us and volunteer. Um, one of our other needs is uh, we're, we're, um, we're in need of coats for some of our students. Um, it kind of saddens me. I'm out there every uh, morning for arrival. We're out there at dismissal. And some of the kids don't have coats. We've given out all the coats that we've had this year. And Kim from Edgar Free Method has brought us up, and she's going to continue to do a coat drive for another week and a half. Uh, the district also put out something just this week. So we're trying to find ways to get some coats you know, and boots for our students, uh, especially some of our little ones. Little ones who walk home, um, we want to be able to support them as well. Um, another need is our K-2 students, our kindergarten, first and second grade students. We really want them to be able to read and comprehend um, everything that they're doing. So we're looking for individuals who would like to come in and read with them, listen to them read, uh, maybe do some flashcards, some vocabulary words, um, some math cards with them different activities to build their self-esteem and encourage them to be successful academically. Um, on the recess. And we need volunteers in general for recess and in the lunchroom. Definitely in the lunchroom. Can I ask you a question? Yes. So as part of my organization, I look at how all the schools are doing sure. in the, on the state English and math test. And I've been doing that for eight years. Mm -hmm. So every year, I look at the results of all the elementary schools, and then I uh, rank the schools based on the percentage of kids they have for the English or math test. Mm -hmm. So this school was at the top mm -hmm. for many years. And two years ago, mm -hmm. it cratered. What happened? Budget cuts, staffing changes. How many staff did we lose last year? Twelve, fifteen solid teachers. Because of seniority, because of budget cuts, I lost some very good teachers. Every year losing good teachers who are not able to return because of seniority issues. I lost four African American male teachers who my boys looked up to. Who were junior teachers? Why did why did they leave? They didn't have enough years. They and what happened was okay, right. they got bumped by somebody in the building who had more seniority. That just drives me crazy. Because oh, I've seen this at other schools too. Look, we all got together and cried the last day. I don't know if I think you were there, but we were in tears. We were I mean Yeah, that's that's part it, of it. Relationship was I mean Yeah. And then like, you know, I don't tell the kids because it's the end of the school year and I never know how things work out. So then they come in and I'm the bad guy. They think I fired everybody. And I have to tell them I didn't fire anybody. It's just I was policies. Here, I was here on opening yeah. day. Yeah. And there's no continuity. Be yeah. and, and because about half of your staff new to the building. Not yeah. necessarily new to the district. Yeah. Uh, to the district. Yeah. And to be able to have an educational enterprise like this 
without the continuity, yeah. uh, it becomes extremely difficult. And, but that happened two years ago? I mean, well, it, it certainly happened, happened this year. It started, yeah, it started happening, happening two years last ago. year, and then it got worse this year. this year. But the other thing, too, was Common Core. All of my staff feel like they're bringing the teachers out of college now. Yeah. That's the other issue. Right. Learning a new you know, curriculum, learning how to roll it out, having all the resources that you need to In classroom to be management. Effective. And yeah. class is uh, yeah. a, a big one. It's yeah, tough it's to deliver the teachers, instruction. Yeah. Mm -hmm. With a lot of new teachers, class management is always yeah. an issue, I think, at every school. And then you also have the issue of if the teachers are learning the curriculum, how do you think the parents are feeling? <laughs> They're like, this is foreign. What is this? Right. And we sit down with them and we talk to them and we try to, you know, have sessions here uh, with, during PTO time. We try to with their parent conference time. Anytime we meet with them, we try to talk about Common Core. Do you loop teachers? Mm -hmm. Do you loop teachers? Yes, we loop some teachers. Um, we have a couple of interesting mixes here. We have, um, when I was in sixth grade with my team, we wrote a proposal for a gender-based classroom. So my sixth grade, um, sixth graders are all girls in one class, all boys. We also departmentalize. So our teachers teach to their strength, their best subject. Mm -hmm. So in second grade, it's departmentalized. Fourth grade and fifth grade is departmentalized this year. Mm -hmm. So we'll see how that goes. Yeah. Uh, kindergarten is departmentalized in science and social studies. So yeah, we try okay. to, Good. you know, yeah. you know. And I like that it's a uniform yeah. school. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Take away from all that, yeah, all that expensive stuff. Right. You know, stuff. Can I, uh, what is loop? The teachers stay with the same right. kids for two years. Right. So and then they move on. You know, so they come the right in. Grade. They already know the expectation. Let's get yeah. down to business. Right. You already right. know yeah. what's yeah. expected. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then, if the, you know, with the discontinuity. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that makes That's sense. the thing. You know, I always say it's all about relationship. Yeah. And, oh, yeah. You know, uh, it's sad to see a lot of our staff go last year. Very sad. We, I fought to the bitter end, believe me, I did. Mm, She'll tell you. Yeah. Fought to the bitter end. And I know yeah. how that is, though. Uh, one of the yeah. uh, actually African American male teacher at School 52 two years mm -hmm. ago had the best math results in mm -hmm. the district. Mm -hmm. Young teacher, yeah. at the end of the year, got laid oh. off. Yep. Yeah. Happened with our technology teacher. Yeah. They Detroit. invested $2,500 in this man. I mean, crazy, crazy stuff. Now he's in another district with the $2,500 of training. Yeah, we come in and, and we, <laughs> for our group, we invested thousands and thousands of dollars mm. through the assurance that, from a meeting with Vargas, that this was going to be something that the city was going to support. We pumped in a lot of money, a lot of support, and then uh, ultimately they just sliced it all off. And this particular teacher that we sent out to RIT for two weeks and paid for his professional development. Yeah, I think Rush and Rada picked them up. Yeah, they did. They loved it because he yeah, was already, he was already trained. trained. They called and asked. It, 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 <laughs> you're right. It doesn't make, from an educational standpoint, it doesn't make any kind of sense. And I, I yeah, yeah, it's very frustrating. Shifting yes. people all the time is not the way to go. No, it's, it's not the, same the way thing. to go. Yeah, it's the same thing. <laughs> If you have too many transitions, right. you lose something. Yeah, you do. So, you know, it's the same thing with the students. They can't be moved because you lose time, right. you lose instructional time with mm -hmm. transitioning from one thing to the next. So it needs to be a smooth, seamless thing. Mm -hmm. Same thing with teachers and the change, you know, so we change the curriculum, we change the teachers, we change the students, you know, we change how we do things. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of changes makes things unsettling. So the kids want something consistent they right. do they and, want to know you know that's what we're trying to do now which um mm -hmm. you know it's difficult because we have to make it look like oh no nothing's changed we're yeah. all <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I understand that well these partnerships mm -hmm. that i'm supporting yeah. are very they're fragile in a lot of ways yes. and, and you build a relationship mm -hmm. right especially with the principal and the teachers mm -hmm. and if if the principal or the change. teachers change, then all yeah. of a sudden you've <coughs> built up this relationship over years, yep. and then suddenly your partner's gone. Yep. And then that's you have to it. start all over again. Yes, you do. And that's, that's hard. It takes time. It takes a lot of time. Right. Mm -hmm. Particularly in an urban environment right. where adult 
relationships are really significant and you have a consistent adult, positive adult relationship and that's one of the things that, that, that I look for in education is one of the most significant adult relationships is the teacher. But that teacher keeps changing. Right. Then right. each year they're starting over again or exactly. like you say, they, they leave the school altogether. And that, what do you think that, I mean, we know what it does to children. Yes. So. Yes. Four years ago, this school was ranked number one in math. Mm -hmm. Number one in I the was district. Here. <laughs> I was here. And then it was ranked third and then 33rd. Mm -hmm. And our SPED students were outperforming our GMA students mm -hmm. back then. Your what? Special education students were outperforming some of our GMA students. Mm -hmm. I was here when all that was happening mm -hmm. as a teacher. Yep. And that's what's so beautiful about the string program mm -hmm. because the same people are here right. as far as I know. Mm -hmm. And just to reiterate, or, you know, just to see those kids, mm -hmm. you know, go up to Patty and, you know, hugs right. all the time. And mm -hmm. it's just people. beautiful to mm -hmm. see. Yes. So, are we ready for the tour? Yeah, we might as well uh, take a tour, then we can come back here and talk a bit more. And uh, hopefully, if anybody else makes it, we'll see if they've got any new things to bring up. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. <coughs> Did we have any other questions we want to ask while we, after having seen the, the tour here? Uh, looks like you've got a lot of volunteers here. Already. We do. We do. We still need more, though. Can always use more, so. Well, yeah. if my organization supports partnerships. Okay. So if there if you have a partner that wants to take the responsibility to be the lead mm -hmm. to manage the volunteers overall, oh, then <laughs> we can talk. Whether yeah. it's the U of R or Nazareth or Nazareth seems to be or, the you know, one of the other partners you have that could step up. So I have a mm -hmm. I have an agreement with the Rochester City School District. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then I have an agreement with the partners. Excellent. So Great. they need you know, to agree mm -hmm. to step up to do certain things as a partner to manage the volunteers. If, um, if you're interested, and if you have a partner that's interested, then okay. we could sit down and talk. Okay. Well, that's uh, great. The would, they, would, they thought I was crazy when I turned in 21 of them away. <laughs> I said, I yeah. need everyone because they all do different things. And I did not tell them that they can't come in my building. Uh -huh. So I said, if you can provide me with hosts, with food, with tutoring, with this and this and this, mm -hmm. then I will not turn in the MOA. They were like, OK, you know, we never MOA is uh, your first one. Memorandum of agreement. We uh -huh. now have to do you know, little mini contracts, which we were never kind of forced to do. Mm -hmm. It was just a verbal agreement that mm -hmm. was understood. But now it's mandatory through the legal department that we get them done in How long did it take? <laughs> Christmas break last year. No, spring break last yeah, year. I turned my, my in whole break. <laughs> the beginning of, of April. Yeah. And it was the eventually approved at the beginning of October. It is, the turnaround is terrible. I'm still waiting for Jackie Sprague. You guys know her? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and she's trying to get, you know. Some, something <coughs> for my girls, my middle school girls, and I turned that in two months ago. Mm -hmm. I didn't go back yet. Yeah. The yeah. superintendent spoke at the 19th Ward Community Association meeting, oh. yearly meeting, a couple weeks last week, week ago, I guess. Okay. And he said, "What was the word he used to describe the bureaucracy?" Oh yeah. At so many central office. Look at it. it was you know impossible right bureaucracy, very, uh, basically. I mean, even he <laughs> can't can't make it work. And Who, he's the boss. This? The superintendent. superintendent. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. I think that's one of the, the incentives behind trying to get uh, uh, partnerships with some of the yeah. colleges to manage the schools right. is to get around. So you don't have to go right. through that. Well, everybody has to touch the paper and look at it before it gets approved. And 
I mean, and, and, um, and all the, the ones we sent, we, they, they've already been in the building. We have a relationship for years, so I don't mm -hmm. know. Yeah, Their I main concern this year was that instruction was not being lost, though. Because when we did the MOAs, we had to let them know that, you know, the service was being provided before or after school, not during school, unless it was a part of the curriculum, or they would not approve it. So that was the was that requirement. The uh, I heard from John Lang that you were having problems placing some of the volunteers because of that. Yep. Mm -hmm. Well, it all depends upon uh, <coughs> in the school. Right. So, mm -hmm. some of the partnerships and teachers are working through this. Right. I mean, if you're right. focused on this common core as a standard, mm -hmm. and that's what John King keeps talking about, mm -hmm. these are standards. Mm -hmm. It's not a curriculum. Right. It's a standard. Mm -hmm. So that means that teachers, principals, school districts can have flexibility to have a curriculum that can get the kids to these standards. Right. But then nobody's familiar with the standards, and then they put out all these modules. So all the teachers said, oh man, That's I've got to use killing. the modules. So now people get confused mm -hmm. and then there's this whole uh, emphasis on whole classroom instruction right. and so now the teachers are saying I can't release a, a child to go with a volunteer yep. for 20 you or 30 it. minutes it. but it's not actually true mm -hmm. it's just depends upon whether you want to think outside the box it's a little bit thing. that's what I've been telling myself and so it's, a, it's a plan but right. you can you know, differentiate. You don't have to use everything. You need to know where your children are, right. skill-wise, because if it's a skill they've already mastered, why are you going through it again? Right, right. Move on to the next thing. So, and the district has stated that because right. teachers are, you know, they look, think it's a script, especially the new teachers. We're like, that's not a script. You have to focus with the end in mind. Look at what the end says, and how do we get them to that end? You know, with planning, backwards planning. So the, te the principals yeah. that have been in place for the longest and the teachers that have been in place for the longest mm -hmm. are looking at this and saying, okay, I got it, but I'm a teacher, right. so I'm going to use my professional judgment yep. and I'm going to use some of the, the teaching aids and modules and whatnot, but I'm, okay. I'm going to augment that or different mm -hmm. from, if I think right. I know a better way for the, te for the kids I'm teaching. Mm -hmm. If it's effective, they can do that. And if and if I can use volunteers in the classroom setting with intervention or differentiated instruction, I'm going to do that That's too. And yeah, I got the whole classroom in, in, uh, instruction approach, but you know, how long can a kid in second grade sit before they need to get up and move around? Exactly. You know. So, you know, have them leave with a volunteer right. for 20 or 30 minutes right. and have them come back, mm -hmm. right? But that has to be approved? No, no, hell no. No, no, it doesn't hell no. no, no, no. It's like, oh. no. Mm -mm. Well, what is I tell my teachers, do what's best for your kids that works, yeah. as long as they're comprehending the material. Yeah. And each classroom makeup is different, each child learns differently, and you Absolutely. have to be able to meet all the needs. And what's <coughs> MOA? Memorandum of agreement. It's just a little, oh. little contract agreement between two parties, and then it lists what it's going to be done between two parties. Oh, you mean yeah. uh, for a volunteer? And right. A, right. Oh, and that takes a long time. Well, because we complete it with our partners. You know, mm -hmm. we agree on it. We turn it in. Then it has to be signed off by the powers that be. It goes through a couple desks. Oh. And returns to us. The key is getting somebody to focus on it. Yeah. It actually takes about 10 minutes. Yeah, it's not that long. It's like, one, sure, like a but, one pager. Right, but from the time you send it into the time, right. you, then you got four months it, yep, to get go. somebody to spend 10 minutes to look at it. That's right. like a good thing to bring right. up. But uh, we don't wait. I say, come on in. Do the work. <laughs> yeah, in other words. I'm not going to wait. Right. I, my yeah, kids need the help. Right. Let's say that Rob wants me. Right. You'd have to wait four months before no, 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 I could. No, no, you just no. Do, yeah. You you're you're just be a volunteer. I'll just yeah. tell you for a volunteer application. That's right. different. Oh. These yeah. are like organizations and companies. Oh, I see. Uh, you know, you have to, you know, I for see. legality purposes. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're, 
you're so. considered a volunteer. Yeah, you're considered a volunteer. They're considered partners. Yeah, I have um, oh, a retired okay. Pod uh, Xerox worker who comes and works in one of my first month grade classrooms with my students. She started last year. She loves it. Mm. She picks her days, her hours. She comes in, yeah. and she loves it. <coughs> so that that's totally different than working with a organization or company. Mm -hmm. or, you know. Yeah. Not That's too bad. That's yeah. wonderful meeting you. Pleasure meeting you. Good luck with everything. everything. Thank God you. bless I'll you. you. Okay. I'll I'm leaving it. Okay. On you. Well, if after, you're interested. Chris, well, when yes. Christmas break starts. Whatever. Uh, yeah. After you move, you get settled in. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Moving's a big project. It is. Tell yes. me about it. We're, right. we're waiting for the closing. It came the day before Thanksgiving. Uh -huh. Thank okay. God. <laughs> oh, good. Well, good luck. Thank, Thank you. Thank nice you. Meeting. You too. Take Thank care. You. We've Pleasure been trying to uh, okay. you know, get volunteers yes. to sign up and we'll work through through free so that uh, we can get the parking set up. Excellent. You're in good shape. Yes, yes. Well, thank you very much thank for you. the uh, wonderful presentation and the like tour.